All right, so I'm outside of a 2018 Honda Clarity. This is actually the touring model. Uh, I'm gonna start you at the back and just walk you through a couple things and we'll hop inside the car. So in the trunk, I want, first wanted you to see the space. There's no longer an IMA battery like sitting down there blocking the trunk so you can lay down the seats flat. Uh, so that's a little bit new as far as hybrids go. You used to not see that in some of the Honda's hybrids. Uh, inside this bag right here, uh, this is gonna be the charging cable. So that's what it is in case you wanna plug it into a, a, a charger. It does have a, a hookup spot to where I can hold that bag in place. And then behind this panel is where the uh, the uh, tire repair kit is. So it doesn't have a spare in this car. None of my hybrids do, so just be aware of that. Uh, down below, I do have some additional storage. Uh, so you can see I can tuck away this bag, so if I wanted to throw it down there, I could absolutely do that, put it away, and then go that route too. So it's just kind of nice that you do have some extra storage in there. And you can see I do have a 60-40 split back there, so I can fold down one versus the other. Uh, and then this is, this is actually really cool. You can see up into the cabin in the trunk, so there's a window back here that allows you to look through. So it's just kind of a cool feature that this car has. Uh, back seat wise, You'll notice on the panels, it's an ultra suede finish. That's how Honda's dis deciphering it. I don't know what makes it ultra, but it is. Uh, you can see I do have speakers. It's an eight speaker system, so I do have them in the back doors, front doors, uh, and then the rest of the car I'll show you too. This model does have leather interior, uh, and you can see that I do have the fold down center console uh, with the extra you know, storage space and cup holders, along with cup holders in the doors. Uh, and then you can see over here, I do have uh, a couple different spots where I can store stuff along with a power outlet, and I do have AC vents back here. So that's what's going on in the back of this vehicle. All right, so moving forward, it is keyless entry, so I can walk. I'm just put my hand on the door handle, and I do have the lock uh, to where I can walk away from the vehicle. Um, as far as getting into the vehicle, let's show you a couple different things here. All right, so starting on the door, you've got a wood grain finish here, and then you've got your power windows, your window locks, uh, your, your, your actual door locks, and then, of course, your mirror controls left and right, and then you can adjust accordingly on the pad. Uh, this car does have memory seating. Uh, to set that, I would just press the set button once I've got my seat adjusted, and then pick one or two. Um, now remember that on your keys, so I'm gonna show you the key here, on the back, there's a number. Uh, so driver one, I can correlate these to the keys, that way it'll adjust accordingly, depending on what key is being used. So just keep that in mind. Uh, moving down, there's a couple buttons down here I wanna point out and explain what they are. First one is related to charging, so that's what's going on there as far as popping the, uh, the cap to do it. Uh, road departure mitigation, this is always on with this LED light. Uh, if you press this, it'll turn it off. Road departure mitigation, if you start to veer off the side of the road, will shake the wheel and give you an alert. Uh, collision mitigated braking system is right here. Uh, that's designed um, as far as to brake the car if you're looking to get into an accident. Uh, first, it'll alert you, and then it'll actually start to brake the car. And then this is related to traction control. This is vehicle stability assist. It works along with your traction control to help prevent um, accidents. So if you start to go into a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever one has uh, more traction, which tire will, uh, to correct that skid. Now, moving down over to the side, you can see that I do have my trunk release and then my, uh, my actual gas cap release up here. Uh, and then my hood release is right down there also. So I've got three different spots right here um, related to opening things and then actual charging uh, you saw up there. So moving up onto the steering wheel. First thing I'm gonna point out is my Bluetooth control. So to answer a phone call, to hang up or go back and then use voice command. Uh, so that's what these three buttons are going to be for. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, also, this one will be related to Apple CarPlay, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Uh, now, moving up, uh, your volume controls are right here, so I just tap, and it is set up to where I can, um, uh, I do have, like, ridges to, to help me find it if I'm if I'm driving and having to pay attention. My plus and minus, or, I, or should I say up and down, or it's going to affect my volume controls, left and right will jump between my audio options. Uh, this I button down here is actually going to control what you see up here, so as I press it, it's going to toggle through. So my, my turn-by-turn -turn directions, if I want my oil life, if I want whatever audio I'm listening to, if I want to jump over to Bluetooth, uh, if I've received a text, general settings, and switching from kilometers and miles per hour, right? So that's the left side of the steering wheel for you. Uh, now the right side is gonna be set up with some of the Honda sensing features. So the first thing you'd wanna do if you were gonna set these is, is press the main button. Now the main button will stay on, so I haven't touched this button and I've gotten in the car and it's still on. So you can see ACC and LKS up there, so that's what's flashing right now. Um, ACC is adaptive cruise control, LKAS is lane keep assist. So lane keep assist is this button right here. Once I get up to speed, I would press this. This runs from 45 miles an hour to 90 miles an hour, and it does not function if you have the blinker on or your windshield wipers, so keep that in mind. Now when it's on, you'll see these dotted lines. You can see them flashing at me, right? When those fill in solid, it means it's now reading the road, and uh, if you start to drift a little out of your lane, it'll just crack for you and pull you and center you back into that lane. So it's real subtle, it's just there to help out. Uh, you know, if you, if you jerk across three lanes without your blinker on, you, you're gonna overpower this, so just be aware of that. Now adaptive cruise control. That's set up to where once I get up to speed, I would press my set button. 
And then from there, I can create distance between me and the car in front of me. You notice when I press this button, you'll see less and less boxes. The more boxes, the more space it's gonna leave between me and the car in front of me. Now, when I'm driving down the road, it'll detect a car in front of me and show a car icon in front of those boxes. So that's how you know it's detecting the car in front of you using the radar. Uh, so just keep that in mind. The radar is actually down in the front grill of the car. Um, what the camera that it uses additionally, and so does Lane Keep Assist, is actually right here. So that's what this box is up here. So just keep that in mind. So that is how the Adapter Cruise Control Lane Keep Assist works. This car does have paddle shifters, so you'll notice they're back there. Uh, and they're used for regenerative braking, so it's just kind of nice. You can help build the charge back up in the car. Uh, that's what it's designed to do. Now moving over to your left side, uh, my auto on-off headlights, I can set them right there. Uh, and if I want them just completely on and I want to turn them off, that's how I would do it. But if you want them to turn on and off by themselves, right there, you're good to go. Uh, moving over to the other side is going to be my windshield wiper control. So you pull down uh, and it'll turn them on and then they're intermittent so I can adjust the exact speed I want, right? So that's what's going on from there. Uh, on the screen up here, you can see I have a nice digital display and then my gas is over to the right side. So pretty clean setup here and you can see over there to the left, I have the charge setup. So real easy to read, real nice to use. It's a nice matte finish so it's easy. It prevents glare and things like that. Now, moving over to the center stack. I'm um, gonna start you. Let's turn the AC down so it doesn't make a bunch of noise. Uh, from the home screen right here. Now, navigation is set up through Garmin, uh, so it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to use. Anything that you see, you can also use voice commands with that voice command button that was right over here, so keep that in mind. So I just want you to know how this works. I mean, there's some general settings and stuff you can go through if you like the map to lay out in a 3D formation versus a normal. Um, you can set your your the car that you're driving to, to look different if you want it different from other cars. So there's some stuff you can play with in here if you want to have some fun. Uh, but it, that's who it's through, it's through Garmin. So I just want you to know how to use it and you have voice commands over it. Now my Bluetooth controls right here, if you've never added a phone, when I touch this, it's gonna prompt me to add a new phone. Uh, so there you would go. If you've already added a phone to this car and you want to add a secondary phone, I'll show you how to do that real quick. So we're going to go to settings. From there, we're going to go to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which is right here. Uh, from there, I believe it'll say Bluetooth device list, which is the second one down. So we're going to select that. And then at the bottom of the screen, add Bluetooth device. When you touch this, it's now going to prompt you to turn on your Bluetooth and then it'll start searching. So right here, that previous screen is where it would show all the devices that you already had added. So that way, if you're adding a secondary or third phone or whatever it may be. So that's how to add a phone to Bluetooth. Uh, moving down uh, to settings. There are a couple things in here I want to show you under vehicle settings. So if we're going to tap that, I just want you to know about these things. Uh, the first one is going to be related to your door locks. So right now, the way the car is set up, when you hit 10 miles an hour, it'll automatically lock the door. So that's what you're seeing. And there's a couple different options you can adjust it to. Now, when you're getting out of the car, one right below it, right now it's set up to where when you open your driver's side door, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. And there's a couple options you can change that too. So I just want you to know about a couple of these features and things that you can play with. Now at the bottom of the screen, you'll see walk away auto lock. Now what this feature is, is if I have the key in my pocket and, and I get outside of the car and I walk 10 feet away, it will lock the doors once it realizes that the key is outside of the car and 10 feet away. Uh, so it's just kind of a really nice feature if you're one of those people who goes into the grocery store and can't remember if you lock the doors or not. So just keep that in mind in case you've bought the car or if you're thinking about it. Uh, so let's jump completely back out of this stuff. Just saw a couple settings. There's plenty of stuff I could show you. Now, once you've connected up a phone uh, via the USB, uh, this is where you have access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, depending on what kind of phone you have, uh, you'll have different settings that you can get through. Uh, Navigation-wise, right now, for iPhone users, you have Apple Maps. As of September, I hear there's an iOS update from somebody who works over at Apple here in Austin who told me you would then have access to Google Maps and Waze, so just keep that in mind. If you are an Android-based user, you already have access to Google Maps and Waze, which I find that most people prefer one of those two. So that's what's going on from here. And then you would have access to your maps, your messages, your music, uh, things like Spotify, Pandora, um, you know, iHeartMedia. Uh, so just some different apps that you can play with, so it's pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, there's some other videos out there you can see it. Uh, Audio-wise, let's see what, you, what options you got here. So if I'm going to touch the source button right up here, uh, and this will bring me up my options. So I've got FM, I've got AM. I come, the car comes with 90 days free of satellite radio. Afterwards, it'd be up to you if you want to continue it. You do have USBs that you can plug into via, you know, if you want to go uh, USB thumb drive and just have a bunch of music on it, or if you want to plug in like an MP3 player or something like that, uh, you have that access. You do have Bluetooth, so you can wirelessly listen to any of your music. Pandora compatibility, although the one thing I will mention about Pandora on here if you use this feature, it's going to lock up your phone. So if you're waiting on text or anything, you're not going to be able to access it under this. So I usually recommend people, if you're using Pandora, use the Bluetooth symbol. So just a hint. Um, let's move back out of that um, and move down one. Info. 
So the info button right here is just going to pull up some general tropometer information. Uh, you can also get to vehicle energy since this is a, a, a plug-in model. Um, so that's what you're seeing right here. So it's just kind of a cool screen to show you some different things as far as what's going on with your vehicle. Um, if you just want a general tropometer information, you could have that right here. Uh, so that's what you're seeing there. Um, or you could just do, you know, general screensaver, clock and wallpaper, which you can load up a picture through the USB uh, to access this screen. You can also get to the behind screen back here if you want to load up something there. Uh, if you have questions about how to do that, I've made a couple videos on it, but just ask me in the video uh, description, or excuse me, you can leave a comment and I'll show you how to do it. It's super cool. Uh, moving down, Honda Link. This is going to give you access to some different features. It is subscription-based, and they do give you 90 free days uh, afterwards. It's things like being able to, to mark a location of your vehicle, um, you know what I mean? Being able to uh, save that location and then come back to it, being able to send uh, an address or a location via GPS to the car so when you get in, it pops up. So there's some different features that are kind of cool that come along with this. And then my app list is just general stuff like a calculator and some things like that. So that's the touchscreen breakdown. Uh, below it, you'll notice the AC unit is dual climate control so I can adjust left and right separate each other. If I sync them up or unsync them, I can adjust. So you can see up here, 63 degrees versus uh, low. If I sync them, now they work both off of my driver's side. So that's how that works. And then my fan speed and where I want the air to go. So pretty self-explanatory there. Now moving down, there's three buttons right here. Econ button, anytime this is engaged, you'll see a green leaf right there. Uh, what that is, is it's gonna affect the gas mileage in a positive way, but it's gonna affect things like the AC unit, it's gonna affect things like the accelerator and how fast it takes off and goes. Uh, sport mode is, is kind of the opposite. So in that sense, it's gonna improve, um, you know, as far as take off and go, give you that little extra oomph that sometimes people want, uh, but it's gonna, you're gonna rev at a higher RPM, so you're gonna burn through gas a little bit more. So just be aware of that. It affects shifting points and things like that to improve that get up and go. And then uh, the HV mode is set up to where I can drive, uh, and it's just gonna try to keep me at a, at a steady um, charge base. That way I'm not losing or gaining charge. That's what's going on here. Um, and then, of course, purely electric, uh, if you want to go into that and try to drive and just run off your, your charge and then you got to rebuild it, right? So down below, you'll notice it doesn't have a standard shifter. It's buttons and knobs. Some people this throws off, but I mean, the LEDs kind of tell you where you're at. Uh, if you throw it in reverse, you see it turns green there. That pulls up my backup camera. My backup camera, uh, right now, I have the guidelines turned on. So that's what's going on right there. Uh, and you can see they cut when I cut the wheel, too. Uh, I have three different views, so wide angle view, normal view and the one aimed straight down so you can see the edge of my back bumper right here. So this will just help you if you're backing up to a curb, a bush, a garage, another car, if you're parallel parking, anything like that. So that's what's going on here. Uh, so that's the backup camera. Uh, and then moving down, you can see when I shift through things, it, it adjusts accordingly. So it lets me know where I'm at. Uh, parking brake is purely electronic. So I put my foot on the brake, I lift up to set it. When I do so, you'll see that red brake sign come on up there in that bottom right corner. So I just turned it off and I turned it on. And you can actually hear it when you're in the car. It's electronic, you'll hear it engage. Uh, brake hold is set up to where from stop and go traffic. I can have this on. Uh, when I come to a complete stop while the car is in drive, uh, I can let my foot off the brake and it'll actually hold the car in place. So that's what this feature is. It's just a convenience feature. Uh, below that, I've got two cup holders. Uh, this does have a leather finish since it is a touring model. And um, then you can see I do have some additional storage space in here. Uh, and then uh, across the dash, you can see I do have like a wood grain finish. It's super dark. It's actually, I think it's a brown, uh, but it's really dark. And then you can see it's it's lined up against the suede with a with a metal lining finish. Uh, so it's a really nice look. Um, and, and then I've got, you know, standard stuff like, you know, you know, your storage areas. And you can see that wood finish continues and goes with the leather. So it is a really nice looking car in the interior. I will say that um, it's a step up from a lot of the vehicles. And as far as an insight goes from years ago, it's, it's way above and beyond. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can comment on the YouTube video. You can always call me at 512-443-4300. Um, or you can email me at the letter J and then fuller at howdyhonda.com. Thank you much.